Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fridays at. I'm um, rebranding, you know, our Friday gatherings. I'll keep saying this so we can all remember. Um, Fridays at used to start always at five, but now I'm giving myself permission to start it a little earlier in the day, often at four, but sometimes, you know, like at one. <laughs> so each event will have its own start time. Today's is at four, as shown in uh, various emails and uh, our community where teachers know about these kinds of events. We're so glad to have you here, and it's great to see familiar faces. Um, I'd like to just give a special welcome to Riley Findlay and Andrew Sanders from Blue Canoe. You just raise your hands for a second so people can see you. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, we're glad to have you all here. And I know our participants have questions and will be interested in sharing ideas. Um, and I also want to welcome Lynn Swanda. Hi, Lynn. Lynn is one of our, our level three trainers. She is our master trainer for level one. Some of you know her because you've already worked with her. And today, Lynn will be sort of starting off our session by sharing some of what she does with Blue Canoe in the classroom. Uh, the whole theme of today's show is what can we do with Blue Canoe apart from saying, go off and use it. You know, that that's kind of the, the smallest lift of, of the idea out there. And we really wanna see Blue Canoe as something we can integrate into classroom time to support our students' engagement with it. So that when they go off outside of the classroom, they really feel like it's connected to their classroom learning and vice versa, okay? Um, so with, without much more ado, I'd like to invite Lynn. She's going to share a bit with us. And then Andrew is going to, uh, to share some new features um, and, and ideas that Blue Canoe have brought forth lately. Um, participants in the room, please, in the chat, use the chat to uh, ask questions and to, if you want to share an idea or you're doing something that you want to add, we'll have a little discussion after Lynn's portion, and we'll have a second discussion after Andrew's portion. And if we have time, I'll share a little bit of what we've been doing recently with a group in Blue Canoe that has increased engagement and kept them working out every day with the app. Okay, um, wonderful. I'd love to hear from, let's see, Lynn, welcome to the room. Um, Lynn Swanda has been working with Blue Canoe and with English Language Training Solutions, Color Val, for several years now. And she really has just this wealth of experience and knowledge working with groups, motivating them to engage in Blue Canoe as individuals and as a group. Um, finding ways to bring it into classroom time, both online and face-to-face. -face. So with all of that, I've asked Lynn just to share for a few minutes uh, some of some ways that she's integrated Blue Canoe into instruction. Hi, Lynn. Hi. All right. Um, first of all, I'll just give a quick overview of um, using your Clipfolio. I think that's really um, an underutilized thing. And I went to my university and my students were getting credit like because because they get tested according to time, how much time they're in class, um, community college. And so I could track their blue canoe and their practice, and then that could add to their um, time. And the university loved that idea. So just, um, yeah, that's just, I'm throwing that out there. Just Karen and I hadn't talked about that, but that, I wanted to put that plug in for it. It was really good in that way. So um, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I do with it online as well as how I would use it in the classroom as well, the same type of thing. Um, so the first one, I'm gonna talk about sort it out and then also about um, just those sentences. I've gotta do sort, I would rather do sort it out at the mm -hmm. end. I always like to do it at the end because it's more exciting for them. Um, but because I didn't wanna start off with those super easy ones and I had to play it for a few games, right? To get the level up. Um, so therefore, we have to start with sort it out. So um, I'm going to share my screen. And hopefully, I will be good. So oh, it's going now something different. Yeah, this is just different. It's coming. Of course. While we're waiting. Um, I would love just a raise of hands. Uh, it's it's actually not a hand. It's just a one. Um, I'll use a one and a two. A one, if you're new to Blue Canoe, 
and a two if you're familiar with Blue Canoe. If you can just kind of go into the chat, let us know if you're a one brand new to get new canoe, brand new to Blue Canoe uh, or a two experienced. I know, for example, Claire's been using Blue Canoe for a while and, you know, great. Good it's to like, know. Thank are you so seeing uh, my phone screen at all? No. We're not. We're not. Okay, so I of course. The one time that I need this to work. And if you need me to, if you need me to be your proxy, I can do that if you'd like. Ah, uh, there we go. Now. Good. Yes. Okay. Very Perfect. good. All right. So as you can see, I'm up to round four here. So the words are going to fall a little bit faster. Um, and I also like it to do this with them so that it's, if I'm not within a, a beginner group, um, just so that the, the spelling's not a dead giveaway and the sounds are a little bit more difficult for them. So, and so and before we play, if you don't mind, uh, Lynn, I'll just add, um, Sorted Out was a game that we made pretty much like by demand. We had users who were already using uh, the app for our voice recognition games, like Color It Out. And they needed and wanted a game they could play in noisy places that didn't involve speaking because they wanted to be on the bus or the metro and be able to you know, work on their awareness of sounds without having to speak. So this, is a, this game sorted out was created around that idea. Um, so it's visual and it's, it's mental. You're listening to words the way you say them in your mind. So just with that in, in mind, I, I, I think uh, we can look at what you're about to show us. Okay, so um, basically it's um, contrasting two colors. And in this round, it's green and silver. I don't get to choose these. It continues to level up if you haven't played it, where the colors get closer together and the play gets faster. So um, I just, I put it on my screen online. I'll show you in a minute how I would do it in the classroom. Um, but yeah, so, and I can tap on these to show the students. Oops, I gotta, sorry, forgot to add sound. Okay, hopefully we've got sound now. Green tea. E. Did everyone hear that? Yes. So we're on green and silver pin. E. So I would have them using their hand. Everybody, green tea. E. Silver pin. E. All right. So we're going to play. And I'm going to pause it. So if you haven't played before, the words fall down from the sky. They start going a little bit faster. I can move them up with my finger because I'm playing on my phone, right? I can move them up with my finger. I can also hit pause. So I just unmute yourselves. Everybody unmute yourselves. So this gets noisy and fun, but they love it. Um, and they just shout out the word and where they want me to move it to. Inevitably, I will always get one in the wrong spot because I've got lots of things going on here. So shout out the word. Tell me where you want me to put it. So here we go. Silver. Yeah, silver. Yeah, silver. Good. Silver. 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 Lift. Silver. Silver. Oh, green. Silver. 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 Silver pen village. village. Silver limit. Silver silver pen village. Equal green. Green village. Silver green. Green 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 village. Green green peak peak green village village. Village where? I just heard the word. Silver 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 village silver. The restaurant green. Green, green, green tea yeah. we green, green tea green. clean. Green, green tea meter. Green meter. Green meter. Green meter. Green, 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 this one was wrong and this one fell down because I wasn't moving it fast enough, okay? So it's not a perfect perfect thing, but they like it because it's not a perfect thing, right? 
So these are all my green words. So we're gonna take out our hand now and we're gonna flood. We're gonna do it three times, slow, regular, and fast. So here we were, start with green tea. Everybody, here we go. Green tea, green tea eats, tea, clean, tea, clean, clean, read, green, meter, meter, equal, equal lead, lead, dream, dream eat, 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 ease, clean, breathe, meter, equal, lead, dream, breathe, ease, clean, scream, breathe, meter, equal, lead, dream, ease, ease. And Lynn, do you like to keep the microphones on for this kind of work too? I do actually. And it's, you know, it's really up to you and students and yeah, how many are in there, obviously. But a lot of times I do, I like to hear the, I personally like to hear them so I can hear if anything's really off on a word then I can come back to it later. But that's- you know, It can be a little bit, it can be a little bit chaotic, but it can be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So it's really what you're comfortable with. Um, so, and I usually pause at this point and give them a few minutes or not a few minutes, but a few seconds just to look at the words now, because up until now, they really haven't had a chance to really pay attention to the words that much as far as the spelling or maybe the meaning. And I let them get then it kind of invites time for them um, to ask any questions about them. So let's do it seems so like a great time. Yeah, it seems like a great time to add words, maybe new words to the color valve mm -hmm. organizer. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, if they have that handy. Yep. And so then we would we would do the same with silver. Okay. Again, the flooding. So, yep. Talking about it. Do you want to flood now, or you want me to move over? I can show sure. you. I can show this in action. Which yeah. would you? Okay. You want to flood or in action? Flood. In action. In action. Now I All right. like an action is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Uh, here we go. All right. So here is a group of teachers. They're all elementary English teachers from Costa Rica. And this is, um, we have a Zoom session, I think about once a month. I'm just working, just supporting them. And so this at the end, they love playing this at the end. I think it's great fun. So here they are. All right, so you're going to shout out. I'm doing the moving. You're going to shout out, so you need to be unmuted and tell me what word goes with what color. So we have either blue moon ooh, right? Blue moon ooh, or a cup of mustard. Uh. So here we go. Can you see the words? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Blue if it stops, moon. let me know. Blue. Okay. So shout out. Tell me blue or mustard. Okay. Blue. 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 Mustard. Public mustard. mustard. Fun mustard. Fun mustard. Fun mustard. Super mustard. Super blue. Super blue. Gun mustard. Super blue. So you do know that when you're doing this, you can touch the word and drag it up, right? Or you can pause, right? You guys all know that, right? That's what I'm doing. Okay. Country. Country. Country mustard. Mustard. How about this one? And this one? You. you. Blue. 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 All right. I'll see if I can get them in the right spot. Sometimes like okay. mustard. The supermarket. supermarket blue. One. 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 Blue. Roof blue. blue. Don. Don. Mustard. Don mustard. It goes very fast. It does. It starts going faster. All right. Uh, Don is mustard. What do you want for the other one? Monday, mustard, mustard done. All right. Uh, blue, 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 Blue. 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 Okay. I usually get at least one wrong because I'm trying to listen and move my fingers. So, okay. 
So now my question is, after you play this, you know that you can review the words, right? And this is, we're going to do some flooding, all right? So we're going to flood. Instead of flooding with rain, water, we're going to flood with a sound. So we're going to start off and we're going to read blue moon. And then we're just going to read slowly down. We're going to use your hands. We're going to keep it at a pretty good pace, okay? The first time we're going to read slower. The second time is like normal. And then we're going to repeat it a third time faster. Okay, this is really great to do with your students for little groups of words that they're practicing that same color. So here we go. Blue, using your hand, blue moon, juice, super, super, unit, supermarket, blue moon, juice, super, super, unit, supermarket, rule, blue moon, juice, super, school. Okay. They like that. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's try mustard. Here we go. Starting slower, then medium, and then faster. A cup of mustard. Thoughts? Something you could do with students? Yes. Collecting your words, your vocabulary, if you're collecting them, right? You can collect them into little stickies and things like that. And, and Nice. Lynn, you're muted. Let me just unmute you. There you go. The teachers that Lynn is showing in, in these in this clip are their teachers of English in Costa Rica. So they're they're doubling up. They're working on their own pronunciation and phonemic awareness while also learning how to teach with the color vowel system. So it's they're they're kind of in both roles at the same time. It's pretty exciting. So um to comments? transfer this to um yeah, anyone comments or questions on that? It, again, it gets a little chaotic, but you know, my students love it, the teachers love it. So, so if I was in the classroom or when I'm in the classroom, um, I used to play it. So, and I have these pages, right? I have a notebook full and I just collect words on sticky notes. These are words that we use in class. I didn't go get any different ones or anything. These are just words that have come up over time in class and I just collect them so you can see. So I would use olive sock and a cup of mustard on the board. I would do my olive and mustard here. And then what I do is I take whatever colors we're working on and I would just mix up the sticky notes so that they're all mixed up. I don't have all olive in one spot and all mustard, but I mix them all up before class. And um, then I put them in a pile at the back of the classroom. I put the students in two lines and they just pick up a word from the pile. And then they say their word as they're walking to the front of the room, to the board. So this one's shot, 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 shot. And they have to, by the time they get up there, they have to decide, is it olive sock shot or a cup of mustard shut? And then they just put it where they think it goes. And then they go back to the end of the line and pick up. And then when their turn comes, so I have, I have a lot of these collected. And then they, they just pick up another word until the words are all up here. And then once they're done, then we'll flood the color. When we get to one that's in the wrong spot, we stop, we debate, we move it if we need to, and then we start flooding again. And we flood, I don't know, several times before we get all the words in the right spot. And then we go to the other color and do the same. And then we fix those words and get them moved over. So that's kind of a way that it works for me in the classroom as well. And it's great. I had three hour classes in the evening when they're all coming from work and exhausted. So it was a really good way uh, midway through just to get them awake and moving and stuff like that. So, 
So that's, Great question. that's how you um, sort it out. <laughs> good question raised by Christina. Uh, do you do this only with single syllable words or multi-syllable words? Oh, well, I have a coffee table <laughs> and knowledge. Yeah. So, yeah, I just nostrils. There's one. <laughs> So, Can you yeah. show us a few of those? Why don't you go ahead and put them up? Let's let's look at how it actually turns out. Okay. Kind of a, a speed version, but you know, speed version, not too speed. Yeah, let us go. Um, so here's. Oh, I've only got mustard in my hand right now, but we'll just pull some. So, watching mustard or olive. Shout it out. Yeah, you can unmute yourselves. I yeah. kind of muted you for the sake of the video. Oh, but. Olive so. stock watching. All right. Keep in mind, everybody, that, you know, to look at trunk, go ahead and hold that one up. Um, for students to try it on, if they say trunk, trunk, if they don't have the mustard sound in their language, their first language, it's not as easy as it is for the rest of us who do, right? So they're saying trunk, 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 trunk. I don't yeah. know. Right. So they're walking to to in front of the classroom saying this the whole time, deciding. So, and sometimes I get little, you know, people grouped up here and then they help each other out, but then they go get another word. So here's yeah. one. A walk in the park. So we have phrases too. Walk in the park. A walk in the park. Ah, 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 pa, ah, ah. Olive? Ah, 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 ah. Yeah. Continent. Uh, continent, continent, suck. continent, 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 suck. Yeah. Of. Oh, cup of uh, mustard. Cup of mustard. Uh, from, 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 from mustard. Mustard. From. 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 Cup of mustard. From. Wanted. Wanted. Uh, wanted. Olive wanted. Sock, sock. Wanted. wanted. Mustard for me. <laughs> mustard for her. So it could kind of go here, right? We could talk about that. Really? Wait, wait, wait. Cup of mustard. What? No, that's definitely olive sock for me. Olive sock. Olive sock. Yeah. Yeah. But I come from this little place in California, this little Central Valley with this mm -hmm. um, Oklahoma dialect and it's wanted, wanted. It's so let's mustard. say that so, they you know, put a little variation one. there. Maybe they yeah. put this one into olive one, right? On. So I'll put it here. Maybe oh, mustard one. Here. one? I, think, I think one is mustard for me. So, but I just let them put them up there where they think they are, okay? Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna flood. And this is where we check. This is how we're checking. For, for, Right, right. So we're going to flood everybody. Get your hand out. Here we go. Olive sock. Shot. A walk in the park. Wanted. Wanted. Watching. Watching. One. One. And that's one. where we're like, one. 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 Right. So then we can talk about it. Is it a cup of mustard one or a cup of mustard olive sock one or a cup of mustard one? And then we can decide and then move it so and keep in mind i mean i would have we would have i don't know probably at least 15 on either side by the time it was done yeah so just a little glimpse of using sorted out online <laughs> as well as in the classroom so. doug makes an interesting comment over there about wonton that when it's wonton soup, then it's one. <laughs> or if you're buying things in Korea, you're paying with one. But teachers, I'll remind everyone that there's more than one right answer for these. And with all of us in the room as English speakers, we're going to have more variation amongst us than would happen in your own classroom where you are the model because you're the teacher. Um, so the, the one right answer is it changes and it's elusive because there's usually two answers. Um, often there are two answers that you can have there, um, but we know that that it's not blue. Okay, and so when you find a word like uh, want and want, you can have a conversation that both are right. Okay, but only as it comes up. Beautiful, neat, Lynn. What else do you have for us? Well, <laughs> I was looking for my window. I lost it. <laughs> 
Okay. And um, the other thing that I do is we play with the sentences in the online. I do this online as well as in the classroom. So I've got to leave my. I'll go back well, while you're connecting I that, I'll just follow yeah. up on Christina's question. So in other words, uh, Christina's question was about single syllable versus multisyllable, where regardless of how many syllables, every word has a stress. And we're organizing words by their stressed syllable. And that's great because it allows us a freedom to work with any word of English. Um, that's that's what it comes down to. Is Does that answer your question, Christina? Is that good? Okay. Or anybody. Okay. Thanks, Lynn. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen with you. And hopefully you can see my phone. No phone. There it is. Okay. All right. Can you see my phone? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Um, so I find that it's very beneficial um, to help students know how to not only know how where things are in the app and where to find things, but how to practice. And if you've had level one, which I know several of you have, um, had it with me as well. Um, then one of your tasks is to kind of take students through this practice thing. I do it a little bit more, a little differently with my own students. I use all of that, but then I have some other things that I add to it. Um, and some students are very curious and they just start punching on things and figure things out, but others aren't. They just kind of go, they become here and just, they would listen and then say the sentence and record it, right? So I'm um, just kind of, here's one of the many variations that I do with this. So um, first of all, I'm just going to listen. What collections are on display at the moment? I'm going to listen with my hand. What collections are on display at the moment? And I'm going to listen with my hand and my voice. What collections are on display at the moment? And now I'm going to take them through and we're just going to look at each of the focus words here. Red pepper collections. And we'll play with that a few times. Red pepper, pepper collections. collections. So join in with me. Red pepper, pepper collections. collections. Red pepper collections. Red pepper collections. And then I'm going to take them to the phrase. Red pepper collections. Red pepper what collections? Red pepper what collections? Red pepper what collections? So I'm giving them some practice with those reduced words right okay and then we move on to gray gray day display 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 then we're going to move into the phrase Gray day are on display. Gray day are on display. Gray day are on display. Are on display. And put those two together. What collections are on display? 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 Now we're going to add that third part. Rose boat moment. Rose boat moment. Rose boat moment. Rose boat moment. Rose boat at the moment. Rose boat at the moment. Rose boat at the moment. And now they're kind of ready to put it all together. So we're going to go back and listen and follow along. What collections are on display at the moment? 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 And now we're ready to record. So I just take them through and show them it's not just a matter of reading the sentence and recording. There's so much more that they can do with it. Questions or comments so far? I really like that, Lynn. I hadn't I hadn't done that before, just fitting in the previous words on a given line. I like that a lot. So, and then I will take it even further with them. So at the beginning, when they're getting used to this, that's all that I do with them. And I'll start them off learning it on a, one of the shorter, simpler ones, like the little two focus word ones, right? 
Um, but as they're as they're moving along after a couple of weeks, then we come in and I do one wrong. And I will say, if you're not used to this, it's good to practice ahead of time. So I have a little markup here for myself on how I want to say this wrong. And my students are, the, I didn't know all this was in here. It's got this wonderful feedback in there. But as a native speaker, I wasn't finding any of it. I didn't know it was there. And my students came to me and showed it to me. And so it was, so anyway, I have to practice to do it wrong. So hopefully, um, what collections? All right, so I'm gonna try it out. <laughs> what collections are on display at the moment? And I do this so that I can help them find the different parts of it, okay? Um, so this is a big one for them um, to compare what they said with what it is. They think they've said everything great and then they don't understand. But then when they go back and they hear themselves, they're surprised. They're like, I did not, I didn't understand myself. i surprised. That's not what I thought I sounded like. So we can compare. What collections are on display at the moment? Okay. So I can compare the two. Then I can go down here and it's telling me that this word is wrong and this word was wrong. So I can click here and find out what it's telling me. This is a gray day, a word. Okay, it says it's gray day. I hear you using white tie. It's got the stress pattern, da da, da da, right? I can listen to the word. Gray day display. Gray day display. I can practice it. Gray day display. And then there's even a little gray day video if I want to watch that. Okay. So here on this boat. You're using the wrong color vowel here. Olive sock instead of rose boat. Oh, and same thing. It's got the stress pattern. I can listen to the word rose boat moment. Rose boat moment. And so, and I, we go over how the stress pattern that's the hand is the long one and the short one. So they kind of have, they can watch that. Sometimes it'll, if it's really off, they'll even give you a little group. And I was hoping to get that, but I didn't. A little group of three words that you can do a little flood with, which is really nice. Um, and then down here, these extras, it tells you what someone else might have understood. Did you say call options are on display at the moment? They love this because it really gives them some insight into what an English listener might have thought they said whenever they thought everything sounded great. So this is very powerful for them to find all these little bits and things. Karen, yeah. Can, I'd love to invite any questions or observations that people have about what they just saw in the feedback, especially anybody who wants like, but wait, what about? <laughs> can you can you play your recording one more time, Lynn? Sorry. What collections are on display at the moment? Should have picked up collections. Yeah, you, you might think, well, why didn't it pick up collections? Yes. And my first answer to that is, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, there's a lot that goes on when you record something on a phone and it goes up to the cloud and it comes back. So there's an I don't know component to it. But there's also to give a better, uh, more due to the way we designed the app. Uh, we also designed it to not overwhelm. And so you'll notice, for example, when you play a game like Color It Out, it doesn't always, it, it won't correct you on the very first turn you take, for example. Like we understand that players or users aren't here to be bashed at every corner, <laughs> at every turn and every turn they take. Um, and so here we've displayed two out of three, right? Do we have to catch every error every time? Or is it enough to give two good pointers? So that that would be, you know, I'm going to say I don't know on one hand, there might be a, some interference. But on the other hand, we also are not always so keen on just 
let's slam them with every detail. <laughs> two is good. Two is good. That's what we can manage. But is there, are there any other observations? Like what about the, the correction on display? Can you touch that again? Display, Lynn? No, sorry. This is a gray day, a word. So the way that Lynn said it in the recording was display, display. What other kind of feedback could they have received at this moment? Oh, and look what's here now. Before we had the video, look what's here now. Yeah, it changes each time you pull it up, by okay. the way. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, there's that little flooding thing. <laughs> so so maybe you were thinking, um, well, why didn't it give stress feedback? Like you're stressing the wrong syllable because she said display, right? So on another turn, it might be stress feedback, but notice how the feedback, regardless of whether it's stress location feedback or vowel feedback, will nudge her into the right place with this word. It needs to be a gray syllable and the stress patterns right there in front of her. And the practice is also reinforcing stress in the right place as well as the right color. I'm going to play the words. I just want to hear. Yeah. Create, available, 80, display, favor. So they could continue hitting that and flooding. Create, available, 80, display, favor. And again, this is a time when the teacher would remind, you know, if, if the learner has an error with display, that word should probably go on their organizer. Right? Neat. Can Other I, comments or questions? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah, Lynn, I was curious to know if you're using this uh, to demonstrate what the app can do and these different activities just as a one-time thing, or is it something that you do with the teachers like regularly as part of the sessions? Um, as with the, um, so with the Costa Rica teachers, I, we did this every time I met with them, we just took one and practiced with it. Just, just, but with my students, I do it regularly as well, probably every, I don't know, once, a week, every week or two. It doesn't have to take long, but that's because Blue Canoe is part of their homework requirement from me to play on Blue Canoe every day. And so I want to make sure that I'm supporting them in knowing how the app, just because they have a phone does not mean that they can use that everything on the phone. I mean, you know, just downloading the Blue Canoe app, they come to me and say, what's my password so I can download the app? It's like, I don't know your phone password, you know? So just because they have a phone doesn't mean they know how the technology part of it works. So I do. I started doing it just to support them in helping them practice and knowing what, how to practice and, and where to find things. And then it kind of grew from there. And so, and now I even, you know, even on the board, I can pull it up on the screen, on the whiteboard or just put the sentence up and then I'm, I'm the computer, right, type thing, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and I, I would add to that, that all of this is new to them, right? The, the idea of stress and color vowels, uh, even for students who you've already introduced to color vowels, just the, think about how much time in their lives they've spent practicing or learning English without that sensitivity to stress. So that's new. And so is learning with an app that you're supposed to physically interact with. So it can't just be like, I told you to do that. <laughs> Once is it never is never going to be enough. You know, I think if that repetition of coming back every week uh, for a small check in and show me a sentence, you know, I want Claire, it's your turn. Take out your phone and show me how you play one sentence. And she shows the class and everybody watches and like, bravo, you know, or she forgets to take out the hand. And then we're like, oh, let's remember about the hand. You know, why is the hand so important for that time on vowel? So these, these are all so many balls in the air that our learners, and my metaphor for the week is dropped balls because I feel like I dropped a few myself. But, you know, that's what we're doing with the app and the movement and noticing the color and where's the stress. And they need practice combining all of these. And so it has to be repeated. 
in other words, Claire, I think Claire's question was great because it was, is this a demo or is this actually teaching? That was kind of the nature of your question. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, over time you can let go of the demo aspect of it some, but it never hurts to revisit it to make sure that the practice is high quality. Yeah, definitely. And they get more confident over time. You know, everyone likes a certain amount of repetition, not too much that it's boring, but it's nice to be presented with something that's somewhat familiar, but a variation on that. So I think that's going to be really helpful for me because I think I haven't done that enough with my students. I sort of probably expected a little bit too much. I mean, I did the demo and then I sort of was like, okay, you know, you're all pretty tech savvy, off you go. But actually, what you were saying, Lynn, is so true that, you know, everyone's different and some of them do just run with it and they're going to find out everything really fast and others are going to be slower. But I actually want them to hit the ground running. So I need to provide more support. Yeah. And I find, um, I've always, I can always find those students who do hit the ground running and go with it. And then they're the ones that I have, can you show us? Mm -hmm. right? Right. So, um, so. Doug is asking the word games. Um, sorted out is only available on the paid version, I believe. Is that correct? So we have that's color correct. out. And yes, that's it. correct. Yeah. And then I don't think we get the the words or the sentences on the free version either, except for just those two, the vowel and the stress, right? Yeah, there are a few sentence lessons that are available on basic, but if you really want to get an access to the full library, you're going to need to do premium. Basic has just, uh, I believe, one lesson of six sentences and then access to color it out and uh, some YouTube videos. I find with my beginners and with children, the free version is plenty. Mm -hmm. um, Stephanie, how much do I work with the students on the chart? Um, it takes a little time. It takes some logistics of getting and of getting the students on board with Blue Canoe. And so I, it's kind of there for them to do. And I just make sure that they, for me, because ours was paid for, um, that they don't pay. <laughs> they just kind of leave it there. Um, so some of them will go ahead and get started with it. And I don't worry about that at all. Um, they know that they have to download the app and that don't do anything. But it takes me usually a couple of weeks by the time you know, I get all the students and get all their, because I have to collect their information to send a blue canoe and then they've got to get it turned on. And so it's usually a couple of weeks. So by that time, they've at least been introduced to the color valve chart, but I don't think that it's necessary that they be introduced to the color valve chart. Yeah, I'll add exactly. We have, keep in mind teachers that we also offer the app in the app store. So we have thousands of people download and use the app with no teacher which is its own proof of concept, right? We have, I would call them super users who you know, use the app for two and three years who have enough information in the app. If they're, if they're the autodidacts that they seem to be, you know, they look for an app in the store, they download it, they're savvy. Um, there, are, there are folks who are professional students without ever having a teacher and they consider the app con as containing everything it needs. Um, so that's to say, just it's, it's not that I'm not canceling out what teachers do, but just know that it can go in both directions. We can start with the chart and the method in our classroom and then introduce Blue Canoe. But in our Speak Confidently course, we have just as many users who start with Blue Canoe and find their way to instruction. So that's pretty interesting. And it should say to the teacher, you, you don't really have to teach it before they use Blue Canoe. You can as long as the logistics are flowing elegantly, the way Lynn was just describing, it's really mostly how much can we do in a day or in an hour, um, just in terms of load and time and technology. Um, but as far as the color valve concept goes, it's built quite nicely into the app. Yeah. Um, would you like feedback well, from you. students on this one real quick? Or not? Oh yeah. Okay. Do you have feedback? Yeah. You have some video? I have a little bit, yeah. So um, now she's been playing this for about a month regularly. And, maybe got, and she was like a daily player for me. So, and this is me for the first time, like maybe it was like probably about three weeks in maybe, um, 
demoing, you know, how to practice and all that. So we've already done that earlier. And so this is toward later, I think. I'm looking at mine. Yeah. Okay. So this is after I'm finished demoing and then I did it wrong and all this and that. So this is her. When you clicked on the icon of the white tie, Oh, no, yeah. on the left, yeah. I didn't Why know. Time. Uh -huh. I didn't know until now that you explained it before. Right. That at the moment that you clicked on it, it gives you not the that the sound, but the word itself that is yeah. there in the in the sentence or the question. Yeah. So that will have helped me yeah. that moment. And like I said, you can. So, um. Yeah, so she's been playing every day for about three weeks and had no idea, you know, she was just someone who was not inclined to just start poking around on things. You know, some some people do, some people don't. So just having that, having seen that was a big help for her. That's impressive. Um, if we could, I'd love to round up this part of our, our day because we have a second presentation by Andrew coming shortly. But I, I would like to bridge this because what that learner just did in the video is what we've been working on. And I would say um, Lynn, um, Jessalyn, who's here in the room, hi, Jessalyn, um, and I have been working a lot on how to increase learners really just expressing what they didn't realize, this kind of uh, self-awareness, uh, reflection, and helping them say it out loud or write it. Um, what Jesslyn and I have been doing, and Lynn as well with the Costa Rican teachers, is running um, a sideboard, if you will, in WhatsApp. We've been using WhatsApp because it's a tool that almost all of our learners use um, intimately every day to communicate with their families. It's a pretty worldwide app, except maybe in Japan, which they use Lime or something else. Um, in Japan and China, of course, where they use WeChat. But I would say otherwise, WhatsApp is is a very much a worldwide tool. Um, everyone, even low tech literacy folks know how to use WhatsApp, right? And so we use WhatsApp to get learners to do the reflection on their learning. And it's been amazing to watch how we can cultivate that um, so that learners are saying, wow, I didn't realize, you know, I didn't realize you could push that button, but also, I didn't realize that um, reply was a white word. I'd always said it as reply or some other, you know, whatever their mistake was. Um, and so we will save, I'm not going to show it today because I realize I want to show, let's see if I can do it without. Yeah, it's showing personal phone numbers is the problem. I was going to show you a glimpse of all the fantastic work we're doing, but I don't want to um, breach any privacy. Um, but what we use over there is a combination of kind of a social media campaign, um, showing glimpses of the app, inviting them to post their favorite sentence of the day or to ask a question, and then showing and modeling how that kind of reflection looks so that learners are bringing that back to the classroom too. Um, so we actually have a three-part model here. There's classroom instruction, there's using the app for practice outside of class, and then there's the social engagement with their classmates and their teacher and, and keeping them going the other hours of the day, thinking about language, thinking about English. Um, so that's, that's the kind of exciting work we're doing in the coaching practicum, the level two coaching practicum uh, with our, our learner course called Speak Confidently, where they use Blue Canoe, come to class and engage in WhatsApp. Um, so we'll see if we can provide a, a, a glimpse of that in another session. But I just wanted to add that um, it's it's do we all sense that there's something more needed than simply saying, here's the app and go play with it? <laughs> uh, definitely. Right. We want students to get the most out of it. I'd love to uh, see if we have any final. We have a couple of final comments and then I'm going to introduce um, Andrew, a comment from Liz. Uh, you said you're reluctant to play on my own because my name ends up on the list with students. Is there a way for the students to play or the teachers to play without this happening? Are you talking about the clipfolio, like the reading of your class's stats, Liz? Yeah. Okay, I thought you were unmuting. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. Because then my name is there and it confuses me. It sort of stays there. And if I don't use it for a long time, it finally drops to the bottom. And meanwhile, it's I mean, it's a little silly thing that bothers me. Is there, is that the only way that, that it works? 
Oh, um, you can actually talk with uh, Andrew or better Riley to just have your name removed from that roster. So you'll still have access to the app, but you just won't oh. be on that roster. Okay. 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 Thank Great. You. So that's a, that's the dashboard feature that Liz yeah. is referring to yeah. where you can see, you know, how recently your student played and you just happen to be on your own roster. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, one other comment, and thanks, Riley, for putting your email there for everybody. Um, and Jane mentioned you, you're lucky to have a smart board in your class, but you can't share your phone. Any advice? You know, what you could do is share your phone through Zoom and broadcast Zoom onto your smart screen. Can you do that? Hi, Jane. Here, I'll ask you to unmute. Oh, you tried that, but you got feedback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. It takes some tinkering. I know you can do it. I mean, I, I, I don't know, but I'm sure you can do it, you know, but it does take tinkering. Uh, figure out is the feedback, you know, is that the smart board fighting with your laptop, then mute one of the speakers. Um, so you'll, you'll find it. Just play with all of the on and off switches and you'll okay. find a way. I was able to do it once, but I'm so frustrated I can't anymore because I know the students would get a kick out of seeing it, uh, and that would encourage them to use their phones. Lynn, what is Let's View? Okay, that's Let's View.com that she put in the chat. Oh yeah, there. I guess it's there. Um, so this, um, my last cohort, we had someone who was extremely tech savvy in there, and um, anyway, she shared this with me. And it's just a way to get your phone to link up without any, like right now I'm plugged in, right? That um, it'll just, you can share your phone straight over to your computer. You have to kind of marry the, I have the app on the phone and then I downloaded it on the computer. It was free. And like within five minutes of me typing in let'sview.com, I click download and then I have my phone thing on there. So I don't, that might be a possibility. That's all I know. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't tried it with a smart board, so yeah. Did you did you download it on your phone? Not the I letter. downloaded the app on my phone, okay. and then I went to the let'sview.com and downloaded it the app onto my computer as well. Okay. They're both free, but you have to have them both because they've got to talk to each other. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Oh, Greg I uses it. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So we get an idea. These are the kinds of sessions we love having because it does come down to these details like Jane's describing, you know, how do I get this on my board or how do I broadcast that? Uh, we can't have all this fun if we're not all looking at the same thing at the same time. So these questions are so important. Um, hey, I'd like to now switch gears to our second uh, main presentation of the day, and I'm, I'm just so excited uh, to introduce Andrew Sanders. Um, Andrew has been with Blue Canoe now since about January. Is that right, Andrew? Somewhere around there. Um, we're thrilled to have you, and, and you're going to show us something new and some plans that Blue Canoe has, right? Yeah, that's that's correct. I um, I saw we had a mixed group of some folks that had used Blue Canoe and and some that had not. So I can just just give a quick overview and then uh, give you a little bit of a preview of what Wordsmith looks like. And it's live, so if you want to start playing with it, uh, you can go and look at it today. But uh, but here we go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share. So, you know, Lynn did a great job showing us um, how, how you can take uh, Blue Canoe, you can bring it into the classroom uh, and help your students um, while you're working with them. But what, what I think is one of the greatest advantages about Blue Canoe is we can take all the great work that you're doing with Color Bow in the classroom and take it home with them because not everybody gets three hours with their students. Maybe you only got an hour a week with your students, um, but they really need that daily practice to build those mental pathways and, and keep it up. Um, and so what Blue Canoe allows them to do is take the feedback that you'd be giving them in the classroom. And as you saw in the sentence practice, it gives you that scored feedback um, so, that, so that they can have them with them every day. Um, and I know Karen had mentioned this, the super users, you've got folks that are doing this every day for, for years on end. Uh, and that really speaks to the amount of engagement that we get um, out of the app. Um, so again, you know, 
why why blue canoe for your classroom? First of all, it's got the color valve system. Karen, uh, you know, poured her blood, sweat, and tears into that, and we took it and we and we put it on an app, um, and you know, we applied technology to it. And so, you know, we had AI before it was cool um, to help uh, to help understand the pronunciation. You see how how our um, our system works, and we have tons of data that allows it to refine those that measuring point, um, and then it gives them that that scored feedback. And then, as I mentioned before, you know, keeping people engaged uh, when you give them when you give them homework and you've got to, you know, write the word 10 times like I had to do in Spanish when I was learning it. Um, you know, all the different uh, conjugations, a lot of fun. But no, I get to play a, an app um, where I got games that are going to keep me uh, engaged and, and using it. So that's what the app looks like. Um, we can after we do Wordsmith, I can show you uh, what the app looks like if you haven't had a chance to look at it. But again, it really it's about um, getting that daily daily practice. And uh, you know, as as Lynn and some of the other teachers that have used it can attest, uh, people love it and and uh, want their students to use it. So just a little bit about what it looks like in the app uh, on the left hand side of the screen. There, that's what you're getting in color it out. Um, again, that that red card is just just like the the physical game that you have, and you're just playing against the computer. Um, and you know, uh, working through those those exercises. Um, and then you already saw the power of the the sentence practice and what you get out of that. Uh, but again, Colorval is central to to what Blue Canoe is providing to your students. So you know what's in the app? We sh we looked at a couple of things there. We saw sorted out, uh, matching the sounds to the spelling. Um, we saw the sentence practice, um, but then you also you have colored out where you get to play against the computer. Um, and then in addition to that, we have the color valve dictionary. So your students can go on the app, look up any word that uh, they're having a problem with. They don't know how to, how to say it. Uh, and it goes, it will give them the definition, but it also gives them that color valve annotation so they can see how they actually pronounce that word. And then in addition to that, I know there was a question about how much blue canoe uh, you need the color valve training ahead of time. Well, all of those videos are on the app that explain what the color valves are um, and, and the color valve system. So um, if you're going on there, it, it will show you how to get into the app. And there's um, and so the 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 um, the videos really helps help supplement what you're doing in the classroom. Um, and then uh, if you haven't looked on our, our website, we have a, a page just for teachers that's got a bunch of resources uh, with some videos and some different uh, PDF files that you can download to really figure out how we, you can bring uh, Blue Canoe to, your, to the classroom. Uh, Lynn showed us some great techniques, but um, there's some other um, techniques that are there. And um, look, you can assign it as homework. Uh, Blue Canoe is gonna give you that 10 minute lesson every day, um, but you could tell, tell your students, hey, I want you to play one or two more games. I want you to work on uh, spelling, look up words, uh, et cetera. Uh, and again, all of that can be uh, charged or, or viewed as time using the app on Clipfolio. So Lynn mentioned that you have the opportunity to see and give credit for how much they're using the app. Um, and so you can measure it out and see, hey, uh, I want them to do 10, 15, 20 minutes an hour, whatever it, what it happens to be, um, going through the different exercises on the app. And then uh, for those of you who haven't seen what uh, Clipfolio looks like, you, you get an admin dashboard. You can see how your students are, are doing it. That's how, uh, Lynn, I think that's how you give them credit, right? Yes, I, I track their uh, points. And then for every 100 points, they get 10 minutes. Yeah. So, um, so you can see how they're using it, if they're using it. Uh, and then also you can see how they're progress, uh, progressing over time. So, um, you know, for those of you that are already familiar with the app, um, I know we've always talked about uh, customizable content, and that's where our new app, our, um, our new application, Wordsmith, comes in, and it's going to allow you to to build some of your own content. I, you know, we already have fifteen hundred lessons on the app, but maybe there's some uh, some subject matter uh, that you want to cover with your students. It isn't in the app right now, but we're looking for ways to to provide that uh, to you. And so, in a minute here, I'll show you what the what words will do, but it allows you to build your own content. Um, and in addition to that, um, if your student is, is trying to figure out, hey, how do I say this? Um, it will help them improve their grammar and then also provide them that, that color valve annotation to say, hey, I, I've got it in a more correct uh, form uh, grammatically. 
And then this is how um, this is how I actually get to say it. Um, and then the other thing that's coming on board is the admin portal. So I know Lynn, you were talking about that process of sending your students' names back and and going back and forth with Riley to get that set up. Well, um, it's it's going to be live, which is the opportunity for you to actually go change your own students and manage your rosters yourself, so that um, so you can get in, get into the classroom and use in Blue Canoe just that more quickly um, and and save everybody uh, time and and effort. So um, so that's coming. And uh, and so unless anybody has any questions about the app, what I'll do is. Um, is I will uh, I will go ahead and put it on on Wordsmith, and so in one second, please. All right, so so this is brand new, right? This okay, this is this is brand new, hot, hot off the press. So before uh, you show it to us, would you tell us a little bit about what what is um, informing it? Because I want to build a little anticipation here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, for, for one thing, like I said, we, we do have a, a, a limited amount of, of content on the app. I mean, it's pretty significant, but uh, may not cover the, the subject matter that you're looking for. Or maybe you have a more advanced student that's looking to do a, a work presentation or they got an important Zoom call and they've got some things that they want to say and they want to make sure that they're saying it correctly, uh, grammatically, but also that they're able to pronounce it and that they'll be understood when they're on the uh, when they're on the call. And so this gives you an opportunity to put put that into the system. Um, get get some feedback on your grammar. Hey, tweak that a little bit. Hey, is it the right tone? Is it a professional tone? Is it a casual tone? Or I'm talking to my friends and I want to be sarcastic. I can even do that. So, um, so it'll provide that that feedback in terms of um, how you're actually saying it. So, hey, how do I say this? And I put it in there, type it in, and then it's going to give me that that feedback and say, hey, here's how how you would say it in a professional way. And then uh, secondarily to that, hey, how do I say that in terms of how do I pronounce it? Well, we're going to give you that same um, annotation that you see in the sentence practice on the app, and we're going to and we're going to apply that to the new content that you just created uh, on your own. So, um, so I don't know, Karen, Karen, if you have any other questions on that before we go and, and check out the app? Oh, that's great. All right. So this is this is Wordsmith, um, and you can find it on on the Blue Canoe app. So uh, if you go to the BlueCanoeLearning.com, it'll be in the upper, upper left hand corner. Wordsmith. Wait, wait. I just want to clarify: it's on the website, not the mobile application yet. Correct. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, and so, and so you can just uh, type in something uh, that you're that you want to know how to say. Um, and let me drop a couple in here. So, so this came from the travel section. Uh, maybe you want a little more professional tone. And you're gonna get a, an updated uh, grammatically correct uh, sentence. And then again, with that color uh, annotation, um, and then we have the different dialects here. Um, I, I heard, a, I think it was a British accent earlier. Uh, if you wanted to do that, I don't think you say much different there, but <laughs> it gives you that that option. So the uh, accents are mostly, or the dialects are mostly for the purpose of spelling. So if you were to enter a word like color uh, and you wrote it C O L O R, but then you put British English, should, you know, ideally should correct it to be C O L O U R and other such things like that. So, you know, a little bit more casual language. All right. So that, that was one.
So again, a little bit more uh, casual, changing your tone uh, in a way to, to do that. And then of course, um, if you had, uh, if you wanted to download it, you can, you know, the Blue Canoe is right there. So um, I don't know if anybody has any questions about uh, Wordsmith or Riley, if I missed anything. Yeah, um, I just, I just like to say that. that can you save those sentences that you're inserting or so you can give them back to your students to practice or is it just one by one? So right, right now it's one, it's one by one. Okay. okay. Yeah. We're planning on uh, iter it iteratively rolling out updates as we go. And so uh, currently, um, all of the uh, color vowel markings on the words are coming from words that are already in our dictionary. Whereas next week, we're going to be using Oxford Dictionary to put markings on any focus word that's identified in the sentence. Uh, next steps would be to try to get it on the mobile application so that instead of just the dictionary where you search one word, you can search whole sentences and get these results on the application. Um, and then, yeah, eventually we'd also like to have features where you can save the sentences and even practice with the sentences just like you could on a normal blue canoe lesson. But these things are all going to come out kind of one by one. Um, so stay tuned. Okay, I think the saving would be nice because we do have some dialogues in our in our textbooks. That it would be nice to be able to enter them and save them and give them to the students. For sure, for sure. Are there going to be? Are you? Do you anticipate having an audio option for these sentences and paragraphs that people can enter, where they can listen to? Yes. Yeah, so my 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 long term goal, and I think you know what we've talked about when we've talked about where we want Wordsmith to end up is if you wanted to, you could um, search sentences, save them into a list, and basically create your own lesson plans with these sentences. And then just like a normal lesson plan, uh, audio could play it, you could listen to it, you could practice with it. Um, and it would basically give you the ability to generate specific content that's relevant to your needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and also if if you were again uh, planning a presentation, you could plug your whole presentation there. It'd be cleaned up grammar wise in the tone that you're looking for, and then also with the annotation, so that uh, so that you could easily take that out and and practice with it. So, so you have a single line in there for entering text. Can, can does that have a limit on it as to how much text you can put in there? Yeah, right. Right now we have uh, a limitation. I think it's what? Uh, how many characters was it, Riley? I don't know. I can find that information real quick, and I can get back to you in a, probably about a minute or two. Yeah, it's not. A I just. Big deal. I just yeah, I, I just entered a whole, like a. A paragraph, and maybe. Yeah, I entered a whole paragraph just now. Just a description. Um, I can share right. here one second. Um, this is just the a paragraph that Andrew actually wrote about blue, about wordsmith. So I entered all of this into that top line okay. and this is what came back. And so if I understand from Riley, you're saying that right now, only the words that are already in lessons in blue canoe are being marked up, but pretty soon a word like Next wordsmith. Week seamlessly next week okay i'll say pretty soon because <laughs> if it's the first week that's amazing but so integrates will be marked up and so forth right yes Neat. that is correct and i would need to talk to our engineers to 100 confirm but based on notes i believe there is a 2048 uh character limit in individual queries which is pretty big but you know you wouldn't be able to put a whole paper in there but break that paper up into paragraphs and you're good to go okay and it's, it's pretty giving exciting. you the stress marks for word by word so you're not getting the same uh phrasal stress like we get in the lessons 
Um, right. So what what he's saying is it would be neat if um, right to see the thought groups. Yeah. So like like broken into the phrases like you see in the sentence practice. Is that what you're saying? Did you like to see that? Well, it doesn't because if I gave it to my students, they would try. For instance, in the in the second line where it says instant scored feedback, they would say instant scored feedback, and it would it would try to put they would try to open their hand everywhere they saw a stress and their sentence wouldn't wouldn't flow correctly. Right. So in time, we want, we'll want to work together to, you know, to form uh, sensitivity. There, there's some formulas for thought groups that, that we can talk about. And teachers, by the way, there are formulas for, for, for thought groups. And we're covering that <laughs> in my new course, which starts next week called Making Prosody Practical. It's, uh, so, you know, when you think about what goes into what a program like this would need in order to mark thought groups, we also need to ask ourselves, how do we even know where the thought groups are? Um, is it just intuitive or are there rules? Yeah. So well, we'll be exploring I look at this, next week. When I look at this, I always have to think to myself how easy it is to be a critic. Yeah. And having these right. things, is, it, it's great fun to, to even look at it and talk about it. So it's, 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 yeah. all, uh, it's all good. It is. It's really exciting. It's the beginning of something um, new for Blue Canoe for sure. So that's that's wonderful. What else is on the horizon, Andrew? So yeah, beyond um, be, beyond this and the um, and and the admin portal, um, those are those are the two big things. Um, wonderful. And, say again. I said it's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Other questions. And this is a, this is an opportunity, everybody. We have a few more minutes for questions for Andrew, for Riley, for Lynn. I'll add me to that list. Um, Susan's in the room. She's another one of our level three trainers, as well as now. Hi, now. See all these folks that are using Blue Canoe a lot, um, teaching in the classroom a lot and training. Yeah. I have a question. Um, I can. Hi. Um, yeah, thanks for updating us on the, the new happenings. I think it's great. Um, I was going to ask if there are any plans um, around uh, assessing students when they first start using the app, because I'm always trying to help students hear and understand their own progress themselves. And so we have uh, the page with um, kind of our proficiency where it's sort of, you know, somewhat vague, but they can get an idea and by looking at that, like, oh, I need to work more on Black Cat, but I'm doing pretty well with Purple, for instance. But it doesn't measure them in the beginning. And I just feel like that could really be valuable. Yeah, you're not the only one that's asked. A lot of, a lot of companies that we've talked to, um, they're looking to potentially apply this in the, for, for business applications, are also looking for, for an assessment. And that's something that we're looking into in terms of uh, being able to do that, because it, you're correct. If um, if you're able to see where what level folks are at to begin with, it can help you tailor your your teaching, and also we can tailor the exercises within the app um, to meet their needs. Uh, because if they're you know an advanced speaker and we're giving them more basic things, they might might get bored with it and and say it's not not good good for me. But if uh, it immediately gets to the more advanced topics, then um, then it can be helpful. So, so yeah, that both both in terms of for instruction, but in terms of business applications, yeah, an assessment uh, would be something that we would work work towards. Great, glad to hear that. And can I just ask one more quick thing? On my um, mobile, um, on my version, I have um, some some sentences that say, "I always understand you," and it has scores. I sometimes understand you, but. Uh, not by mistake, but just when I was reminding the students that they could look at this link to the Kalaval proficiency, they saw my page and they all sort of started saying, well, we don't have that. How come we don't have it? It was, <laughs> I said, well, I don't know. It's not really that important, but they got really curious about that. So I was just wondering if you could enlighten me as to why I do have that on mine and they don't. That one, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Karen, you know? 
Yeah, my guess is that you have an older version of the app. Um, I'd be curious, and everybody can check the version of the app that you have. Um, but if you look in Blue Canoe under your setting. Yeah, uh, I, I did see that. And you're right, because I've been using this a long time, I have an older one. And then, but my students who all got theirs on the same day, they some of them have the older one and some of them have the newer one. So that's also something that's confusing me a little bit. That's interesting. So in other words, I, just to show everybody what we're talking about, let me just grab a screen here and make sure we know what we're looking at. There we go. All right, so if we're, you know, here's the main screen. If you come up to your profile, everybody, uh, is this what you're referring to? Yes. So you're saying that you have this and some of your students have this, but some students don't have this. No, sorry, I didn't explain that well enough. So they all have that. And that was the purpose of why I sent them a, sc um, a screenshot of my what I see on my phone. But I don't know if you can see clearly enough. Will it come up? I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Above those, the color of our proficiency, it has some sentences that say, I always understand you, 400 to 500. I, I usually yeah. understand you, et cetera. That's yeah. what... It doesn't show up too well. Oh, there we You'd go. have to lower the. I know what you're yeah, talking about, the, though. That's the color valve scoring, which we don't yeah. have on the, on the app currently. Okay. So it we, we, yeah, this is something that we used to have as a feature. Um, we're working on making it more accurate. And so we've removed it temporarily. So you have an old version of the app. By the way, um, Claire and everybody, when you want to hold your phone up to show your students something, if you lower the light level significantly, like you go to, I'll stop your spotlight here. Anybody can try this right now. Like right now, see how, well, mine's a little bright. I can lower my light and then you don't have, it's not as bad, right? You can see my virtual is getting in the way. So I can oh, stop that as well. It is better. That's it. So now we can there see the are. screen. See Great. That. Uh, that's, that's the thing for the, for the afternoon. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> yeah, that's the trick. <laughs> you know we all we all need to have these little tricks that's why we're here on Fridays at whatever time we get together hey folks this has been um super fun I want to see if we have any other questions because we still have a couple minutes um yeah it could be what their phone downloaded you're right Lynn um if they have an older phone it might I wonder if that's maybe Riley would you know about this would an older phone going to the mm -hmm. app store have somehow with the with the app store know or say google play would it be able to sense what version phone they have and give them an older version that fits with their phone is that yeah, so my understanding and uh, just to be clear I'm, I'm i'm not a software engineer but i did get a minor in computer science when i was in college but uh but but but, but my my understanding is that there are certain dependencies that are baked into app versions and these dependencies are like libraries of code that our app uses and is built on there are certain dependencies that will work on newer hardware, like new phones, and there are some that will work on older hardware. And so if we have an updated version of the application that's using up-to-date and state-of-the-art dependencies, it may not show up on an older phone. Um, in a, you know, an older version may be on that person's app store. I'm using a lot of may because again i just want to re reiterate i'm not a software engineer but that is as much as i understand what could happen and speaking i would of need updates, to consult with my team because they would know better yeah than me. yeah and speaking of updates I, I understand blue canoe is close to releasing an update um is there anything that our teachers need to know about that uh, yeah, we have already released the update on the Google Play Store, and we currently have the uh, new version on the iOS uh, in testing right now, which means that it's on the App Store, but it's not public to y'all yet. It's in testing mode right now. Um, the short answer is no, there is not uh, really anything that anyone needs to know. Um, the only significant uh, change for the users that will be on the app when it comes out is that it's going to connect with the new portal that Andrew was talking about and allow students to enter in a code. If you buy licenses, you'll get a license code and then they can enter it in and they'll have premium access and you won't need to go through me anymore. And, and I think one thing, maybe it was mentioned already, but just worth reiterating, because I think, I think our audience will be really excited. 
Um, if you have, if you teacher has been at a school that has purchased Blue Canoe licenses, or say you are a school and you've purchased Blue Canoe licenses, you'll be able to do that through the portal, like an actual, you know, you can use a credit card and it makes it really easy. So, you know, if you're yeah. at a school that uses a purchasing card um, and they'd rather use that because it's the end of year and they want to use the budget and they have a P card, um, you'll be able to go to the website and actually just do it there instead of um, a purchase order and, and talking and talking to Riley and here's the list. All of that is simplified with the launch of the portal. Uh, so that's yes. very And you'll exciting. also be able to remove students you don't want in your groups and give access to new students and all of the things that until now you haven't really been able to do. Who wants and to the, say and hooray? The super admin, hooray, yeah. dang, hooray. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the super admin will be able to create groups as well. So if you add a teacher, change a teacher, or like, you know, um, I forget who it was, was was concerned about being on the same list as all the students. Well, we could take a group and it would just be the teachers. So so what they're using is not showing on the broader group or something like that. So um, so you have a lot more flexibility in, in, on how you administer the app once once you get on that portal. Great. Well, I know we're all really excited to, to see that the portal will be launched when within next week, you said, or? Uh, yeah, so currently, like the portal is completely ready to go. The only reason that we haven't uh, released it yet, and it has been ready to go since late May, is that we're waiting on the iOS update to go through. So we don't want to release the portal uh, when it would be useless for anyone using an iPhone because they can't enter in the code. Um, so unfortunately, we finished the portal before uh, Apple reviewed our app. They take a lot longer than Google Play. So as soon as the Apple update is out, will uh, release the portal. And if it's released and you email me, that's when I'll tell you like, oh, hey, we can go set you up on the portal, but I won't give you homework to do until you reach out to me. <laughs> and that would be an argument for making sure your students have an updated version of the app, by the way, right? Um, if, if it's a new uh, set of licenses and your students are going to use those licenses, they have to have the updated app. So just, just a thought about that, everybody. Um, you know, more and more, and this is kind of a great way to wrap things up, um, teaching with technology also means teaching technology, how to use it, how to set yourself up with it. It's simply part of what we, we do. We have to be uh, up on things. We have to try new things ourselves. Um, and so that's why I'm, I'm so glad to have, I wanna thank Lynn in the room um, for, for always looking around for that new tool. It's not one tool ever. It's always going to be a combination of uh, known tools and then a new one that solves a problem. So, um, or, you know, Doug, I see that you're poking around finding tools that work for you. Um, this is the nature of our work now. And the more we can share these with each other, the better. Uh, and so that's why we get together on Fridays. We're so glad to have you. Thank you, Lynn. Everyone, can we do a little bit of applause for Lynn right there? Um, thank you, Andrew, for all of that new information, a little glimpse of what's going on in Blue Canoe. Um, and everybody, thank you for being here. We have recorded this session. I will be posting it in the teacher's community. If you are not yet in the teacher's community, remember that you can always go to learn uh, at colorval. Let's see, learn.colorval.com and join our teacher's community. I've just put that link in the chat. Okay, that is a free community. Um, it is different from our Facebook group. It, we now have this community for all of our teachers. Uh, it doesn't involve the use of Facebook, so it's a bit more secure. Um, and we do post all of our events there. Okay. If there's an event that you would like, a topic you would like featured coming up, uh, whatever it is, whether it's technology, language, or both, please contact me at karen at colorvowel.com. Let me know what you're interested in and let me know if you'd like to talk about it and be one of the presenters. We'd love to have you. Um, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Any final comments as we close up? A takeaway, an aha, an appreciation. Just Hi, one Doug. Quick comment, Karen. I, I've had a couple of times where the uh, pronunciation in Blue Canoe is different from what a student uses. And I know that you say that there's more than one right answer that sometimes is, has more than one color. But on the other hand, it seems to me like in our in some of our books where they mark 
where the stress goes that when there's a conflict i always go back and teach what's in blue canoe because i think that's where my students will look for help if they're trying to pronounce that word again later so yeah you can tell them you can tell them there can be more than one right answer but i always refer them back to blue canoe because that's where it, that's where they will go to mm -hmm. look for pronunciation I like to say, you know, it's it's a good way to say a word or it's a good way to say this phrase. Um, I, I, I always like to remind our students and our teachers that we don't have to look for the only answer, you know, so just that openness and to say, here's one great reference. Um, I think that leads them to the same place, Doug, right? Well, yeah, the but same they're learning English. I mean, they yeah. are learning English. So I don't want to confuse them too bad by telling them there's two ways to learn this word. Yeah. You go back yeah. to that word W-O-N, one, and it could be cup of mustard or olive sock. And I, I, I would tell them that it's an olive sock word and that's how they should, that's how they should learn to say it because that's what they see in Blue Canoe. When we look up the word, okay, just a comment, just a comment. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We can go down these kinds of paths. There are lots of these good why questions, by the way. And Claire, I want to acknowledge that you asked a good question through email um, earlier, maybe this week or last, about orange. These are the kinds of things, um, and I'll come back to you personally. But we're happy to have sessions like this. Um, if you're interested, please email me, everybody, and let me know what you want more of. Um, how often you'd like a blue canoe session. Uh, we can weave these in and and what other topics you would like. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thanks again to our presenters. Um, be well, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.